Quadratic equations are everywhere in math, but did you know there are multiple ways to solve the same equation? In this video, we're taking the equation x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals 0 and solving it in 10 different ways. Whether you're a fan of factoring, completing the square, or even graphing, we'll explore each method step by step, and by the end, you'll not only have a solution, but you'll see the beauty of math through its versatility. Let's get started. The first way I'll solve this equation for x is solving it by factoring. Because this is a quadratic trinomial that has an a value of 1, b value of negative 8, and c value of 12, I can get it into its factored form by finding two numbers that have a product of the c value 12 and a sum of the b value negative 8. The two numbers that satisfy that product and sum are negative 2 and negative 6. Negative 2 times negative 6 is 12, negative 2 plus negative 6 is negative 8, which means that quadratic would factor to x minus 2 multiplied by x minus 6. And now that this is in factored form, the product of these two factors would be 0 if either of the two factors were 0. So I'll set each of those factors to 0 and solve. Solving those equations, I get the answers of 2 and 6. Subbing in either 2 or 6 for the x's in the original equation would make left side equal right side. So those are the correct answers. And this is the most efficient and probably the most common way of solving a quadratic that is factorable. But let's explore nine other ways you could solve this quadratic equation as well. Moving this method out of the way, let's explore a second factoring method. Another way we could have solved the quadratic by factoring would be to solve it by factoring by grouping. The process would start out the same, we should identify that the quadratic has an a value of 1, b value of negative 8, c value of 12. And now this method isn't normally used when the a value is 1, but we could still use it if a is 1. I would look for numbers that have a product of a times c, so a product of 1 times 12, and a sum of the b value negative 8. The numbers that satisfy that product and sum, once again, are negative 2 and negative 6. But this time, instead of going right to the factors, we're going to split the middle term into negative 2x minus 6x. And I'll leave the rest of the quadratic equation the same. And now I'll factor this four-term polynomial by grouping. I'll take a common factor from the first two terms only, so I'll common factor an x from the first two terms. And then from the last two terms, negative 6x plus 12, I'll common factor out a negative 6. Notice I have this common binomial of x minus 2, so I can common factor out an x minus 2. And once I common factor out those x minus 2s, I'm left with x minus 6 as my second factor. And now we're at this familiar point in the equation. It's just like step 1. I have the factored form x minus 2 times x minus 6. That product would be 0 if either of those factors were 0. x minus 2 would be 0 if x was 2. And x minus 6 would be 0 if x was 6. So once again, the same two answers of 2 and 6. Let's move that method out of the way, and let's move on to our third method which is going to be solving by completing the square. This is a necessary method to know because not all quadratic equations can easily be solved by factoring. So in this method, I'll start by rewriting the equation. And now because we have two variable terms, one of them with an exponent of two on the variable, one with an exponent of one, there's no easy way to rearrange this to isolate the variable x, unless we can create a perfect square trinomial so that when we factor it, we get a binomial squared. And to do that, I can take the constant term, move it to the right, and then on the left side of the equation, I'll create a perfect square trinomial. I'm going to have to add a term to make it a perfect square trinomial. The term I have to add is always going to be half of the coefficient of x squared. And half of negative 8 is negative 4, squaring it gives me 16. But I can't just add 16 to one side of the equation, the equation isn't balanced anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to subtract 16 on the left as well. So notice what I did is I just added 0. But I don't actually want this minus 16 on the left, so what I'm going to do is move it to the right side of the equation. And then on the left, I have my perfect square trinomial. It easily factors to a binomial squared. The numbers that multiply to 16 and add to negative 8 are negative 4 and negative 4 which means this would factor to x minus 4 times another x minus 4, which could be just combined together to write as x minus 4 squared. And on the right side of the equation, I just have 4. And now isolating this x is easy. I can move this squared to the other side by plus or minus square rooting. And then moving this negative 4 to the other side, I have x equals 4 
plus or minus the square root of four, so plus or minus two. So my two answers, my first answer I get from doing four plus two, which is six, and my second answer I get by doing four minus two, which is two. So again, those same two answers, but a completely different method. Now that method is quite time consuming, which is why the next method we're going to do, solving using quadratic formula, is so useful. So let me move that out of the way, and let's move on to our fourth method, solving using the quadratic formula. If you have the general standard form quadratic, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, solving the equation for x by completing the square, it would rearrange into x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c, all divided by 2a. So instead of having to go through this whole process we did for method number three, what we could do is we could just take this quadratic that has an a value of one, b value of negative eight, c value of 12, just take those three parameters and sub them into quadratic formula and get the answer for x. Subbing them into the quadratic formula, it would be x equals negative b, so negative times negative eight is positive eight, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative eight squared, minus four times the a value of one, times the c value of 12, all divided by two times the a value of one. And then simplifying this equation, I have x equals eight plus or minus, and underneath the square root, negative eight squared is 64, minus 48, that's 16. So I have the square root of 16 all over two. And the square root of 16 is four. So splitting into two possible answers, I have x equals eight plus four divided by two, and x equals eight minus four divided by two. For the first answer, eight plus four is 12 divided by two is six. And for the second answer, eight minus four is four divided by two is two. So once again, with quadratic formula, same two answers. Now that we've got the most common methods out of the way, let me make some room and let's move on to some less common methods. Like for example, method number five, let's solve this just by guessing and checking. If algebraically you weren't able to solve any type of equation, I suppose this is a valid method. It might take a long time, but you might get lucky and be able to find the answer. So to solve this by guessing and checking, let's let this quadratic on the left, let's call that f of x, and then let's just start plugging in values for x and see if we can find some x values that make that quadratic equal zero. Starting with f at negative 10, that would be equal to 192. That's far away from zero. So let me move over more. Let's do f at negative five. f at negative five is 77. Closer to zero, but still not there. How about f of zero? Well, that's 12. That's even closer to zero. How about f at two? f at two is zero. That's an answer. So there's one solution to the quadratic equation, but this quadratic equation has two real solutions. We know that from all the other methods we've done, and we could also check the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, see that it's positive 16, so there are two real solutions. But, I mean, if you're guessing and checking an equation, you probably wouldn't know how to tell how many solutions there are. So you just keep going, see if we can find another one. How about f of four? f of four equals negative four. How about f of five? That's negative three. Oh, it's going back up towards zero. How about f of six? If you're, oh, that's zero as well. So the solutions are x equals two and x equals six. Same two answers again. Now that guessing and checking method seemed pretty aimless. There's another method which is kind of similar to guessing and checking. It's called Newton's method, but it's not aimless guessing and checking. You do start by making a guess to where you think a zero of an equation could be, but then you go through an iterative process using the zeros of tangent lines to a function to narrow down in on the solution to the equation. Let me show you what I mean. For the function that we've been working with, let me give you a rough sketch of it, even though we haven't analyzed the graph yet. I do know the x-intercepts are at two and six, and it opens up, and the vertex is between two and six. Now how Newton's method works is you have to start by guessing an answer to the equation. So guess a zero of the function. Let's say you guessed an x value right here. Well, that's clearly not a zero of the equation because the function is right here at that x value that you guessed. But what Newton's method does is 
it looks at if you were to draw a tangent to the function at that point, where would that tangent line cross the x-axis? And that would be your second guess for the zero of the equation. And notice that second guess is a little bit closer to the true zero than the original guess was. And then that process just keeps repeating. At the x value of the second guess, the function's not actually at zero, it's, it's up here. But if you were to draw a tangent line to the function that goes through that point, notice that tangent line, if I zoom in, it crosses the x-axis really close to the actual zero of the function at six. So let me show you the formula that goes through this process. The formula says x sub n plus one is equal to x sub n minus f at x sub n divided by f prime at x sub n. So what that does, using your original guess, it generates the next guess in the sequence. And then you just keep performing that process until subsequent guesses are arbitrarily close enough for you to think you've narrowed down on the exact answer. So for example, for the equation that we've been working with, let's let x squared minus 8x plus 12, let's let that be f of x. Let's say I guess that 5 is a zero of this equation. I know it's not, but we'll let that be the first guess. So x1 is 5. I can then use this formula to get a second guess for the zero of the equation. So x2 would equal my first guess, 5, minus f at 5 over f prime at 5. And that gives me 6.5. So the second guess is probably closer to the actual zero than the first one is. But because 5 and 6.5 are pretty far apart, I'm going to keep going through the process to get a more accurate guess. So to get my third answer, I take my second answer of 6.5 and subtract f at 6.5 divided by f prime at 6.5. And if I do that, I get 6.05. You can now see that it's starting to converge on 6. If we get a fourth guess for the answer, I can take my third guess of 6.05 and subtract f at 6.05 over f prime at 6.05, and that gives me 6.0006, and, and it keeps going, but about that. So now that these guesses are getting really close to each other, it must be narrowing down on the actual zero of the equation, and we can see that this value seems to be getting closer and closer to six. So I would say that an actual answer to this equation, I would guess, is x equals six. And we could go through this process again to find the other solution, by starting with a guess that's closer to the answer of 2 than it was to the answer of 6. But that's enough for you to get the idea. And I suppose it might have also been helpful for me to write down the equation of the derivative so you could see where I was getting the f prime values. f prime of x, if I differentiate x squared minus 8x plus 12, it would be 2x minus 8. And let's move on to some other methods that utilize technology to be able to get the answers. Another great way to solve equations is graphically. And there's no better tool to graph functions than Desmos. So method seven, let's solve by graphing using Desmos. We're looking for when this function x squared minus 8x plus 12 is equal to zero. So let's go to Desmos and graph that function. So I'll type the function f of x equals x squared minus 8x plus 12. And then to solve the equation for when this function is equal to zero, I'm looking at what x values does this function have a y-coordinate of zero? So I'm looking for the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are at two and six. When x is two and six, the y-value is zero. So those are the solutions to the equation. So I've copy and pasted that image here. So you can see how the graph reveals that both two and six are the solutions to this equation. Those are the x-values that make the y-coordinate be zero. So let's move that out of the way and see another method we can do using technology. Method number eight, I'll show you how most scientific calculators would be able to solve the equation for you. Let me open up a Casio scientific calculator emulator that I have. Let me show you one way you can use a Casio calculator to solve an algebraic equation. You start by typing the equation. So to type the equation, I have to find the variable x by pressing alpha and then the closed bracket. My equation is x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals zero. And to get equals, I have to press alpha calc. And now that I have the equation written, all I have to do is press solve. So shift calc, and it solves the equation, giving me the answers of x equals two and x equals six. 
So that's how you use a scientific calculator to find the solutions to an equation. Let me move that out of the way. And let me show you how you would use a graphing calculator to solve the same equation. So I'll open up my TI-84 emulator. And let me show you what I think is the best way to solve equations on a graphing calculator. We start by inputting the function that we want to know the zeros of. So I press y equals, and I input the function, which was x squared minus 8x plus 12. I'm going to graph it. And then on the graph, I can see where I think the zeros are. But if we go to calculate by pressing second trace, I can find the zeros of this function by picking a value to the left of where I know one of the answers is. So I'll choose right there at one and a half, choose a value to the right, I'll choose 2.57, and then make a guess somewhere in between there. And the calculator is able to show me there is a zero at x equals two. I could then perform that same process, calculate zero, I'll pick a value to the left of the other answer. I'll pick right there at about five and a half to the right of it, six and a half, and then anywhere in between. And it finds the other answer at x equals six. I'll paste a screenshot of that. And I'll make some room for our very last method where we'll make use of a couple different online tools, either Symbol Lab or Wolfram Alpha. I think I'll use Symbol Lab because the user interface is a little cleaner, although Wolfram Alpha I do think is more powerful. So let's go to Symbol Lab. In Symbol Lab, all you have to do to solve an equation is type the equation x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals 0. And then hitting go, it will show me the solutions to the equation. The solutions are x equals 6 and x equals 2. And it'll show me the steps using quadratic formula, and it also shows me the graph as well. So I'll copy a screenshot of this. I'll paste that screenshot. And there we have it. On this page are all 10 methods for being able to solve that equation. We started off by factoring, factoring by grouping, solving by completing the square. Then we did quadratic formula, guessing and checking, Newton's method, and then we moved on to different technology, such as solving by graphing with Desmos, using a scientific calculator, a graphing calculator, or an online tool like Symbol Lab. Hopefully you enjoyed that video and you have a good understanding of all different ways you can solve quadratics. Jensen, man.